Okay, review day four, which is on logs and exponential functions. There are the topics. We we first started uh, our discussion with logarithms on realizing that it was an inverse of an exponential function, and then we went into properties. We saw that we could do graphs of logs in the same way that we did all the other graphs. Uh, we saw log and exponential equations, and then we used the, our knowledge to do some applications as well and finish it off with rate of change and let's get into some examples. First of all, find the inverse of that and graph both. Uh, state the domain and range of both. All right, well this is an exponential function and we'll call this that graph and we want to uh, maybe we'll find the inverse first, right? The idea is we switch x and y and then solve for the other one. Well, what's the first step? Divide by 3 or multiply by 1 third. And the whole idea of this whole chapter was how do I get the unknown out of the exponent? And the opposite operation the undoing operation of exponential function is the log function. Log function base whatever the base is, and in this case, 2. So I'm going to take the log base 2 of both sides. On this side, log base 2 of 2, that wipes that out, and I'm left with y minus 1. And then finally, I can add 1 to both sides, and then I'll get my inverse function. So therefore, y equals log base 2 of 1 third the x and then plus 1. And here are my two functions, the function and its inverse. I know that one way to graph them would be to graph the first one and then just flip over the line y equals x. Now, I may or may not do that depending on how the mood strikes me here. Uh, let, uh, let's get into the graphing part. 2, 4, uh, 2, 2, 4, or what am I doing here? I'm going to I'm gonna goof up my scale here just, just so I make it hard on myself later to do, to do the, the uh, so now the line y equals x, by the way, is, is off on an angle. But often, this is what we do for these, uh, these exponential functions is a different scale. So I'm going to use this scale. Um, I see the stretch factor of 3 is going to goof us up. That's probably why. Remember the original graph, y equals 2 to the exponent x, um, goes through here, uh, 0, 1, and then 1 base, 2 there, negative 1, and flip of the base, which is a half. So this function here would be the original. But I see what, I, what have I got for the original function. This is vertically stretched vertically stretched by 3 and then since it's in with the x this is right one right one um, so all the vertical distances get multiplied by a factor of 3 so where it was 1 now this point moves to there where it was 2 it gets moved to 6 where it was 4 it gets moved to a hmm, whole bunch right 12 way up here and where it was a half now it's three halves right about there but then these points all get shifted uh, right one so now right one to there right one to there right one to there and there's my original function my, not my original function, my transform function. I'm going to circle those points so it, they stand out. So this is y equals 3 times 2 to the x1, x minus 1. So if I had my domain and range of f, I can see it's all real numbers for the domain. But what's the range? Well, I haven't moved anything up or down. This is just y has got to be greater than 0. Notice that without even thinking about it, I can I could be able to state what the inverse uh, domain and range are because they just switch, right? They just switch. But just for funsies, 
just just for practice, let's graph this thing and then see what happens. So, so I'm going to graph the original log function. And notice this is going to be goofy because of my scale. The original log function goes through that base and 1. And then the next one's at uh, 4 and 2. And a half and negative 1 would be here. And that's the original graph. But what's happened to it? Well, this is a horizontal stretch, right? Opposite that you think. Well, we'll make that kind of makes sense. This was a vertical stretch, so the inverse is going to have a horizontal stretch. Ah, that kind of makes sense. the The original function was moved right one. So, what's going to happen to the inverse? Up one. Okay, well, let's see if we can get through this uh, this uh, horizontal stretch. Where it was 1, it's going to go to 3. Where it was 2, it's going to go to 6. Now, I don't know if I can fit that on. I'm going to have to guess here. 2, 4, 6, and right around there. And then where it was a half, now it's 3 halves to about there. That would be the this one here. And I'm going to see if I can... I'm going to kind of sketch this in just because I want... We're getting some more practice graphing these. This one here is y equals log base 2 of 1 third x. And then i got to move this this thing down. I'm running out of colors here. Let's see. Green. going to move the whole... Oh, no. Up. Up 1. So this whole thing gets moved up 1. Watch your scale. Up 1. Up 1. Up 1. And there's my graph. And I hope that if I were to pick some points out, like this one looks like uh, 3, 1, that there's a point 1, 3 on. Oh, look at that, and it works nicely. Um, dandy. Good graphing review, right? Doesn't necessarily have to be logs, but all those stretches and compressions and uh, transformations, that's uh, good to review. Some log rules. Um, notice these two don't have the same base, so I can't put these two together. I can't go log base something of 3 times 8,000. These two I can put together. They're both log base 10. So over here I'm going to put log 8,000 divided by 8. Remember when it's subtracting on the outside, it's dividing on the inside. And then I can see I'm working with, we're working with both pieces here. This is the log of 1,000. And the log of 1,000, even though I could put it in my calculator, I'm not going to reach for my calculator because 1,000 is just 10 cubed. This is going to be plus 3, right? And I want to write the, the, the thing on the inside as a power of the base because then a function composed with its inverse wipes each other out. And that's the idea here. I, I know I want to write log base 9 of 9 to the exponent something. But what's 3 as a power of 9? Well... We know that this is true, right? So what's the exponent? It's the exponent a half. 3 is just 9 to the exponent 1 half. They cancel each other out, right? They wipe each other out, and then I've got 3 and a half as the answer. Dandy. Easy peasy. Next one is an application question. And these were a little bit of review from grade 11, except for we were able to do more with them. We were able to actually solve them nicely. Um, these very practical uh, examples, although this one, who cares about what the car's half-life is. Car loses 30% of its value per year. I'm going to write down this, this formula. Originally, it cost $30,000. So the original cost was $30,000. What's the A value? Well, remember, this is a loses, this is decay. So I could think of it as 1 minus R, where the R is 30%. The base is uh, 0.7, right? which makes sense. If it loses 30% of its value, it keeps 70% of its value. There's the, there's the, um, the model, but now for... Part A, I want to find the half-life, which is how long it takes to be worth half as much. And this is just a 
exponential equation. Divide both sides. I can't combine here. Don't do that. Divide both sides by 30,000 and I get a half over here. Right? This divide by 30,000. And then I want to get the unknown out of the exponent. So I'm going to take the log base 10 of both sides so I can use my calculator. Right? The x comes down in front. I'm going to change to a decimal here. And then just fire this into your calculator. X is log point of 0.5 divided by a log of 0.7, and I got it to be about 1.94 years. So it loses half of its value in, in almost two years, um, the half-life is 1.9 years. What was part B? What's the A rock? Well, A rock's fun, isn't it? Uh, A rock, we just think of f at x2, subtract f at x1. And in fact, some people, even for I rock, are, are still using this formula where the x2 and the x1 are very, 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 very close together, as close as you have patients to put them together. Um, fifth year to eight here, so our x2 is eight, our x1 is five. We want f at eight and f at five. And in fact, we kind of learned when we could. We could had a tough time putting this into our calculator in one step when it was rational function, but this was very, very doable um, as far as uh, one calculator in one step. Thirty thousand point seven. There's our our functions. Our f at x was this this model up here, right? f at x was 30,000 times 0.7 to the exponent x. And so put that into your calculator all in one step. Implied brackets, right? Divide by 3 at the end, and you should get negative 1104 decimal 22 over years five to eight, the car was losing $1,104.22 per year, the value in value. Now let me tidy that up a bit. That's gross. In value. I think that's it. I have a little bit of a word about uh, uh, Unit 5. Unit 5 that you just finished was almost all review. Perhaps the thing that was that was new was maybe, well, we did some modeling early in the year, but not with all these crazy functions. This was the new thing, right? The solving unsolvable equations using the numeric technique or using the graph. That was That was the new thing. You can almost guarantee there's one of these you know, one of these sorts of ones on the exam, right? When is this true? Solve this equation. Well, we can't we can't solve solve it using traditional methods because we can't bust it up, um, and so we use either a graph or guess and improve. Um, and that's 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 maybe the one thing that was new uh, in Unit Five that you should definitely take another look at. All right, that's it.